All right, in today's spotlight, billionaire Elon Musk announcing that his company Neuralink has implanted a wireless chip in a human brain for the first time. He says that person is recovering, recovering well, and the initial results show promising neuron spike detections. Musk says that Neuralink's first product would be called telepathy and that its initial users would be people who have lost the use of their limbs. Neuralink received approval for human testing in May and the company has been recruiting potential human test subjects for its clinical trial. They said they wanted to enlist people who are living with paralysis due to a spinal cord injury or ALS. I want to bring back our panel here, Mike Muse, John Katko, Christina Sinsun Ramirez, and joining us is Dr. Leah Kroll, neurologist and assistant professor of neurology at Temple University. So thank you all for being here with us. And Dr. Kroll, let's start with you here. Tell us about the science behind this technology. I mean, Musk says essentially you could control a phone or a computer, I mean, just by thinking. Yeah, this is very cool, very exciting science here. So basically the way it works is Neuralink designed this device that is a specialized sensor. The device gets implanted into the patient's brain and then it reads the electrical signal that our brain cells are constantly sending to each other. Ultimately, those signals are what gets translated into action outside of the body. In this case in particular, we're talking about controlling computers and smartphones. Wow. And what are your thoughts on, you know, how soon you could actually see this kind of technology? I mean, commonly available. Clearly, it has to go through several trial phases. Yeah, we're at the very beginning of the clinical trials here. Um, so what I would say is probably within my lifetime as a physician, this can be something that I might be offering patients down the line. But for now, it's, it's something in the future, years away at least. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, though, that is pretty quick. Uh, so, John, how important are these private enterprise research and development advances and how we can ensure that, you know, that technology is been being used then in an ethical way? Yeah, first of all, it's just another example of how great this country is. When there's a need and the technologies there, and people that are brilliant develop these products and they're, they're for the good of mankind. I'm excited for this. I'm excited for AI, what that could do for research to find cures for terrible diseases like you know, like cancer. So uh, it's a step in the right direction. We have to applaud it like the good professor just said, but um, let's make sure from a ethical and from a mm -hmm. control standpoint, we don't let things get out of control with this stuff, that's all. Yeah, and I know that's certainly something that you think about as well, Christina. And also, you know, the federal government at this point is not leading the charge on this kind of innovation with all the resources that these other agencies have. Yeah, you know, it's a very strange world that we live in that we're even able being discussed this. And I'll usually be hard pressed mm -hmm. to congratulate Elon Musk or agree with much of his ideas. <laughs> but on this technology, it really does have the power to improve people's lives, um, particularly speaking with people that may not be able to speak or hear or move their bodies. And so that's a huge step forward. And while we can celebrate that, I think we also have to realize that it could have its shortcomings, right? That when you have a big advance in technology or when you talk about AI, for example, you need to really do a a cost-benefit analysis, will the, the, the cost outweigh the benefits? And we need to make sure that the government is taking a larger role, rigorously testing, researching, and regulating mm -hmm. um, potential falls and downfalls with this kind of technology. Right, we're just at the beginning of this here, but Mike, it still could be a game changer for people who suffer from paralysis, stroke victims, people who can't communicate. Do you wanna put on your engineering hat for a second, Mike? And give us your take. <laughs> Kana, you know this is my favorite subject and topic right here. And Kana, as we discuss all the time, uh, this is artificial intelligence at its best. And if you look at the conversation we just had in the previous segment, looking at drones and the way that technology will be used in theater of war, how it can be used for that dynamic, but also can be used for good in terms of health advancements and moving forward. But in particular, this is what happens when you don't have overregulation that stifles the innovation that could produce such game-changing scenarios that can improve quality of life, not just for the individual, but for that individual's family. So they can have a two-way communication and they can lead a normalized life. And that is the power of technology when we don't have things that are too overregulated or canon where we're not afraid of it. And we come from a place of how can we make sure that it is controlled so it doesn't do harm without allowing it to stifle innovation so that it continuously do good.
Yeah, and Dr. Kroll, I'd love to get, let you respond to that in terms of, you know, the overregulation that you can see sometimes, but what kind of regulation is needed if this were to work and if this were to be integrated uh, into society? This is going to open up some really interesting issues in that space. Just like with any medical device or medical treatment, the FDA will have a role in regulating this, right, when we talk about making sure the appropriate avenues have, have been gone down in terms of research and appropriate data collection, things like that, safety. Um, but there's this kind of ethical technological overlay, um, particularly when AI comes into the picture, which it does with some of these brain machine interfaces. Um, and we're gonna have to have serious discussions about how the medical community comes together with the legal community and the technological community and talks about how we can all regulate this in a safe way. Absolutely. Uh, Mike, John, Christina, and Dr. Kroll, our thanks to you. And coming up here next in Last Call, our panel will weigh in on how Russia's loss for alleged doping at the Olympics could be a gain for Team USA. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.